Hello, this is Greg Wagner doing a overview of blind search for CSCV 471 artificial intelligence. This will cover um, chap chapters 3.4 and 3.0, basically 3.4 in the um, Russell Norville textbook. So the idea behind blind search is you have an initial start point, which is represented by the red block, and then a goal, um, a goal state, a goal node. You try to find the quickest path there, and but with the blind search is you don't know the, the cost of going each way. So the quickest way in this case would be going from here to here. If you're doing a search, you might go this way as long as you get to your goal. And that's what we're trying to avoid. But um, with blind searches, that might be a, we may not get an optimal search distance. So to kind of state out the problem, using the, our agent uh, model, our initial state um, is what we read as the initial state at, at that current moment. And so for this instance, um, the, for a maze example, initial state will be the start, the start state, your start location. The goal is the node you're going to try to get to or the state you're going to try to get to. Um, the successor is from each initial step, where, um, from the initial state for each in a maze, where's the next step you're going to go. And so our problem is taking in your initial state, your goal, and then your successor states. How do you get from the initial state to the goals? And then your solution is, um, basically the, the best path to get from your initial state to the goal state and then how you would you what steps you would do to perform that. And so in, the, in a state space we have this initial state and then each step will go to different states. So in a maze basically each little block will be or each step you, you could go would be a, a separate state and then we're going to build nodes on top of those where you can go to successor ones. So the basic concepts for this is we're going to do a tree search, we're going to search a node, or we're going to do node expansion. And at each stage determines, um, the strategy is basically trying to figure out at, what st at each stage right, on which node should we go to next. And that's what we'll basically be going over. And so, um, like I said before, nodes are not equal states. So we have this initial state here, but then we have is this. But then the node would build onto this where we have the successor states and then where we're going to go from there and then where we have our successor states from each one. So again, a node, a state is where we, it's kind of the current real, real world condition and the date, a node is a data structure that tells us where we're going to go. And so you may have a, a, a finite number of states. But basically, the, the search, the no, different nodes we can, the paths we can go to different nodes could, could be infinite, especially if there's no, we can't find any end of the goal state. And so, the basic, again, the basic node structure is we have a, what state we're in, what the parent state is for this one, what actions we can take from that state. So the parent um, data structure is important because we don't want to go back to where we went before. We want to look forward. The cost of going to the um, of the current node, or go into that state and then how deep we want to go from that state to keep on looking. And then as a memory kind of management thing, if the state is too large, it may be preferable to just represent the states that we kind of know that exist and then just regenerate the nodes as we go along. Because if you have basically, you know, infinitely a number of possibilities, you could run out of memory real quick. And so to introduce a new term, the term is a fringe. So the fringe is a set of nodes that have not been expanded to yet. So basically we know these um, nodes exist, but we haven't gone past them. And basically we store the nodes as a queue. And so the different um, blind search algorithms we're going to go over, um, basically how we're going to build that queue is kind of the difference between the different algorithms. So as far as a fringe, we have two functions, insert where you give the node and which friends um, node and which friends are associated with it. And then remove is where we associate, we remove a different um, fringe element um, from this queue. And then, like I said before, the ordering of the nodes is the, of the fringe is how you do define a search strategy. So the basic blind search algorithm is if we're in an initial goal, um, then we return to the um, initial state. If we're not, um, insert the initial node and then to your fringe and then keep on repeating until we either hit, um, run out of moves 
or we reach our goal. And then we can look at every successor state. So um, for this upcoming assignment, the, um, the mage search, um, it randomly generates a maze, and there's some mazes where you can't reach the goal, um, period. And so you need to figure out what to do and how to stop that. So to perform the measurement of a good search is completeness. Did it find a solution if there's one? Is that solution optimal? Um, what's the time complexity? What's the big O time complexity? And then how much space memory will it require? And so these last two um, are pretty important as far as measuring. So say if you have a big data center, a lot of data backing it up, um, space may not be an issue, but you may require time. So think like a Google search. Um, space is really not that big of a deal for them, but time is. They want their searches to be very quick. Whereas um, maybe if you have an instance where time isn't that big of a deal, but you want to save memory, you have to always to deal with those trade-offs, which is probably you've, by now you've learned that generally if you get something faster, it usually uses up more space. And so we have um, basically three variables that we're going to be tracking as far as the complexity goes. Um, B, which is the maximum number of successor states, it's called the branching factor. And so for a maze, we basically have a maximum of four successor states, but it's basically the number, the breadth of the number of branches you can do. Um, the minimal D is the the depth of the shallowest goal that you can get to. So the minimal length of a path in the state space between the initial and the and the goal state. So you want to try to minimize D, and then the maximum length of path in the space space. So this is the max. Um, basically the mass path you can get and so again you want to try to get a um, this is going to be basically fixed for your state but these three factors determine the complexity based on which algorithm you use so in today's class we're going to go over a blind or uninformed strategy basically you don't know what's happening you kind of just go forward and then the second one we're going to go over um, in the next lecture is a heuristic strategy is exploit information um, Basically, you can determine which ones are more promising than the others. And so, for example, um, if you look at these two different states, um, this initial this state is not very good. We have to move basically move the one up to the corner, stuff like that. And then this lower state is actually very optimal. All I have to do is one move. So, what I mean by kind of doing a heuristic is you want to try and find states that. Um, have like a more optimal performance where this wouldn't be a you know less state a worse state you want to move toward where this could be a, considered a better one. But for in the blind strategies, notice how we don't we can't rank these. So for a blind strategy, both nodes would be perfectly equal. Whereas when we talk about next to a heuristic strategy, this one below would be ranked as higher. But right now we don't really rank this the cost of each states or how badly they perform. This just reiterates what I said before. And so just kind of as a quick remark, um, some problems are formulated as a search problems are NP hard problems. Like, I, you know, the, um, so we have, you know, we had the eight puzzle um, question on the far, but what if we had um, N squared minus one puzzle, stuff like that. Um, we can't expect it to solve such a problem in less than the exponential time in the worst case. So looking at the big O case, um, NP power problems can't be um, solved in less than exponential time, but we can try to um, strive to solve as many possible instances as fast as possible in a fast instance. So basically what this is saying is just try to do your best. Um, we may not be able to solve it optimally, but in most case, try to get it opti a very quick for most cases. And so we're going to basically go over uh, essentially four different, five different um, st search strategies. So we're going to go over um, breadth first, depth first, and uniform cost. And as far as breadth first, we're going to go over bidirectional and um, uh, depth limited uh, for breadth first. We go over bidirectional. For depth limited, we're going to go to um, depth first. We're going to go to depth limited and iterative um, deeping. Um, for this upcoming May search problems, I'll give you the breadth first and depth limited um, code. And for the assignments, you're going to perform analysis on these as well as implement an iterative deeping um, blind strategy um, solution.
and whereas so for these base cases the cost of each step is one um, and then for the uniform cost we have um, we have a, basically a cost function that we calculate. So to go over the breadth first strategy, um, basically all the new nodes are searched at the ends of the fringe. So we're going to add, so our initial state is 1, so our fringe is 1. We realize that that's not the goal state and we search and we see there's additional fringes, additional um, leaps I mean. And so our fringes can become 2 and 3. Now, so there, since there's these initial ones are going to be searched at the front, but we start with, so we're going to start searching two, we search two, and then we notice that um, two contains um, fringes four and five, so now those are put at the end of the queue, and then we're going to search three. So we see, we see three, and then we notice that three has um, fringes six and seven, but um, since we see 7 is the goal, we see, okay, we're done, and we stop, and then we find our best path if we go from 1 to 3 to 7. And so the branching factor, based on the number of steps we have in this case, would be 2. The depth for the shallowest node of our goal would be um, 2 steps. Um, this algorithm is complete. We can solve it pretty much every time if there's a solution. And the optimal step cost is 1. And the number of, oops, the number of nodes generated is going to be the number of the number of uh, of branching factors, and basically the number of breadth we have times d. So in the case above, b is branching factor is two, and the depth is two. So this would be two squared. So the the time and space complexity is basically we need essentially um, four four items. So it's an exponential growth, but we have b is essentially going to be fixed. And generally, um, for most solutions, b is much lesser, less than d. So if we can keep um, b small, it kind of negate, helps negate the, the growth of the, of the depth. But the, again, the depth is the shallowest way we can go. So if you have a very quick solution, um, this is going to be a fairly optimal solution. But again, look at it. It is exponential, so it still kind of doesn't get better than np, um, np hard. But in basically every instance, um, is going to be about the same complexity. And then just kind of give you a refresher what big O notation is. Um, if the function um, g of n is in big O um, f of n, there exists two positive constants, a and n. For all n is, is greater than, um, all lowercase n is greater than big N, and then g is less than a, where a is a constant. So for example, um, if the complexity, if the number of uh, steps it's going to take is n squared plus 6, the big O is going to be 2 of n. So basically, whatever the max um, exponential value is going to be is what your big O is going um, to be. So And so for the time and memory constants of this breadth first, just kind of go over the big N. So say if there are 111 nodes, I'm assuming that B is 10. Um, we can do a million nodes per second, and then a, um, basically 100 bytes per node. If D is um, 2, so the depth is 2, we do this in one millisecond. But notice we have an exponential growth. So as um, D becomes 4, our time becomes one millisecond, becomes six, so it just increases by two, it becomes one second, and we have about approximately a million. So notice how this is, as D grows, we get exponential time and the memory growth. And then another strategy is basically having a a bidirectional strategies. So you basically have two fringe queues, one that starts from the initial state, and then one starts from the goal state. And then you find the interconnecting node that goes between the, the quickest paths between the goal state. So basically you're going bo both directions. 
and this will initially find. So this is looking for a, a, basically a linking successor state to each of these um, each of these trees. And so, notice how the time and space complexity is much faster because it's it's half of d. So basically, the breadth is cut in half. And so, using a bidirectional strategy for breadth first is optimally much faster. And then, kind of the change the node up for a depth first strategy, we basically put all the new nodes are going to be in the front of the fringe. So we start at one, and then notice how two and three, and so the next step we're going to go to is four and five. So we have we search for two or four, so four and five. So we're going to go to so our fringe is now four, five, and three. We're going to go to the bottom of four. So in this case, our fringe is. Um, I forgot what this number is. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, and three. See that it's not this one. This doesn't lead to the right path. This doesn't lead to the right path. It's going to the fringe is now going to be these three. Searches those three. Now it's back to three. Now it's going to add these to the front. So it's going to, the fringe is now going to be this one, this one, and then we search this one. You can see it's, we're going to search this one. Doesn't exist, and then we find our our goal right here. And then so for the branching factor, again is B, the depth is D, and then the, add the maximal depth of a leaf node. So this is going to be a factor in this one. So the time complexity for this case, well, the, um, so basically this is complete only if there's a finite tree search. So basically um, if there's a, a limited depth. So this is not the optimal way to go. However, we get different metrics. So the time complexity is going to be um, B of M. So again, the branching factor is B. Um, the branching factor is big O, um, B of M. So it's the, say the branching factor in the case above was two and the maximum depth was three. You get a branch factor of M. But notice how with the breadth first, it was, it was B to the dth power, to the dth power. So the M value could be longer than the D value, so the time complexity could be a lot slower. However, the space complexity in this case, remember before it was B of D, this one is basically M because the branching factor is going to be fixed and well M could grow. So the space complexity, you're basically trading off for the depth first, it's going to be, worst case it's going to be slower, but it's going to use up a lot less memory. That's kind of the trade-off they do. So if you were designing an algorithm for like a search engine, which one would you use? Now say if you're using a search algorithm where you have very limited memory, like say you're trying to do something on a Raspberry Pi or something like that, then what, which one would you use? And then for basically the breakup, we have the depth limited strategy with depth first, the depth cutoff of k. Um, basically, we have a, a you know finite number of um, uh, of depth we're going to check. Um, so that basically, this has three possible outcomes. You have a solution. Um, you have a failure, basically meaning there's no way no way to do the correct search. But you could also have a cutoff where there's no solution within the cutoff. So you actually with a depth limit strategy. You may not find a solution because it's basically too far down the, the tree to actually see it. Well, this limits the the, uh, the time. So basically, in this case, k becomes m. You limit the time complexity. You may not have a solution, so it's suboptimal. And then another solution, which you'll be implementing for this assignment, is the, um, the iterative um, depth strategy, where basically you keep on increasing k. Um, well, this one will have a time uh, a solution. Um, basically, your space complexity becomes d um, is basically the same as before, where it has uh, instead of b of d or b of um, m, it's b times m. The big O is b times d, 
And so it's, it's a little bit better performance than you would find for um, basically a, a generic depth, um, depth first strategy. And so to compare the, the different blind search strategies, the breakfast strategy is complete and optimal, but it uses a lot of space. Notice how before it was big O, um, B of D. Um, so it has it a lot of space, but it is fairly robust as time. The depth first strategy is very space efficient, but in its um, basic form, um, it's not complete nor optimal. And then iterative deepening surgery is considered asymptotically optimal. It's generally, if you keep the, if the depth is pretty flat, it's generally uh, pretty optimal. Um, And then for these, you kind of have some things to think of, of first. Basically, you need to kind of store the state, and, um, state descriptions. A breadth first strategy is you basically keep track of all generated states, and the straight is new, and a new node already exists, then you don't search that node. Um, for a depth first strategy, keep track of all the states associated with the node in the current path, and if the new node already exists, then discard it. So basically, you, have, you do have to store all the different nodes. Um, this do requires um, doesn't require using loops. Basically, you just kind of stuff uh, keep a basically a hash table of everything you've kept in there. Um, second solution is um, keep track of everything you generate so far. Um, and then, if your new node has already been generated, um, then you discard it. So this is kind of a more loop-based uh, strategy. Basically, you have to keep on basically. You for both cases, you have to have some accounting to keep track of everything. So since we've gone over the comparisons between the depth first and breadth first um, blind searches, I want to just kind of go over the assignment real quick uh, where you're going to be implementing this code. So the, for this code, you're basically making a maze and you're going to implement the two different, um, two, three different blind um, search algorithms. Um, to just give you the basic structure of the code I gave you, this code will be provided on the Detail website as well as I have a link to a, a GitHub um, source code repository um, down below this video. So the so, the so um, you're gonna this code basically is built up of um, seven files that's gonna be in um, on the GitHub. It's gonna be a homework three blind search. The driver is my mazes um, from top to bottom. Maze view um, generates a view of the maze. Maze is the actual maze constructor. And it's randomly generated. So if you want to see the maze the same every single time. Um, you can set the uh, the view in there, you can set the uh, seed value in there, um, and then the iterative deepening search engine is the one you're going to be creating, and I provide for you a, a depth first search engine and a breadth for, first search engine, and then we have an abstract search engine and kind of link these um, three different search engines together. So I'm going to start running the debugger. I'll step into the maze um, um, the maze um, constructor. And you see here, I have my mazes debug. If you want to, um, there's a. If you want to make a look at the kind of um, static class of my mazes, you can also um, run this debug and it'll give you some outputs. And so, initialize the different values, and then the um, so the the width and height are going to be set by you and then it's going to build the obstacles um, essentially randomly and so it just gives you the locations of all these different things and then it's going to set the values um, um, randomly, so if you use math random, so if I if you add in there um, math seed, um, it set at the beginning here and set it to uh, random seed to set it to like one or something like that. You will basically get the same maze every single time. So if you want to test it, you can maybe do it that way. So then we basically generate the rest of the values, and then I also have a copy constructor. We pass maze in. This is just basically for generating um, the using the maze instances um, for 
um, your different searches. So first we're going to do a depth first search. I'm going to step in. This, this is the uh, copy constructor for the maze. And get out of here. And then step into the maze. So we have a super maze class. So the super class is the abstract search engine, so it sets all those values. And then in depth first search, we have an iterate search um, method. And basically what this is, is it's used as a, um, a recursive function for doing the search. So I'll step in here. So the initial state is, are we still searching? And this is initially set to um, true. So we'll stop searching basically when we find the goal or we basically look at all the different paths. And so it will calculate the initial state, which is going to be our, um, the, the initial state is going to set the, where we currently are based on the initial states um, of this value, and then how deep we want to go. So in this case, the depth we want to go right now is just one. And then we'll step forward, and this will find all the possible moves that we have for a different dimension. And then we'll basically look to see if we have, if we were out of moves, basically it means, so the number of moves we have in this case is two. So it's going to go forward. Um, search path is going to look at the depth. So it's going to look at where we're going to go in the search path. And then if, if we're in the goal location, so it's going to see where we are. If it's in the goal location, um, we're going to stop. And if it's not, we're going to keep on searching deeper. And then we'll go into the deeper class. So I'll step out of this. And so this is basically a very uh, basic um, depth first search. And you see this code is fairly simple. It's um, the iterative search is only about 20 lines or so. And so we'll generate in this case the view. And you can see the path it kind of as a meandering path um, to the Pacific goal. And then we'll go on to the next case, the breadth first search. So again, we're doing the copy constructor. We'll step in. And so we're going to do this grid on a 2D grid. So I'm going to step in here. And so this is not iterative, this is not a recursive function. It's going to be an iterative function. Um, I just found it easier to implement. Also, it kind of shows you how the different things go. So it's it's setting up the initial cases, and then it's um, looking at the previous places where it's gone, and then it sets up a um, initially. So right where we start off, we've already basically visited the initial state, and we'll add this to the back of the queue. So remember, with the breadth first. Um, we go to the, we look in the, when we find fringe elements, we add them to the back of the queue. And with that first, we look at the, um, the initial elements, uh, the ideas in the front of the queue. So this is going to step through. Um, and it looks, initially the success is false. You check if um, the queue is empty. And the queue in this case is empty. And so we're going to keep on going. We'll step through. It looks at all the different um, possible directions. And then um, basically looks at the different directions we're going and sees if it's something we already visited. It's going to um, add them to the uh, already visited flag and then do a predecessor. And it's going to add and then it's going to, um, if it's a location we haven't visited yet, it's going to add it to the back of the queue and then uh, continue searching around there. So in this case, the connected items. We have basically two connected directions, and it's going to keep on going. And then so once we've looked at all the different directions, um, we're going to we're going to basically search. We're going to basically search the items that are in the front of the queue um, to the end. And then once those are done, we're going to keep on going. So basically, we're going to keep on searching through the queue until we find the goal. And then. We find all the different paths to the goal, and then we're basically going to find the quickest path to the goal using this breath first algorithm. So it finds all the different paths, and then does basically finds the quickest path. So if you compare this, so we have on the so on the left here. We have the depth, the, the depth first search, and notice how it has a meandering path. It's not the direct path. 
where the breadth first path is basically the direct path, the ideal path is a direct path to the particular goal. And so this one is more optimal, but as I mentioned in the lecture, it takes up more memory. Where this one basically take, this thing takes a very little memory, kind of just goes to wherever it feels like it's going to go, it doesn't have to save everything, but it um, is not an optimal path and computationally it's much slower. And so what you'll be doing for this assignment is building up the iterative path. What I suggest you do is just modify the depth first search, but um, um, instead of keep on going until you find the end, just keep on iterating the depth until you find um, the goal. So I hope this was helpful and we'll move on to the rest of our lecture. And then for the uniform cost strategy, each step has a cost of that's greater than E, um, which is basically the less uh, epsilon, as which is greater than um, zero. So the epsilon cost can reach up to the cost. The cost of the pass of each fringe node is node n is g of n, where you sum the cost of all the steps. So basically, it's how many you cut the cost of how many steps you need to get to something. And then basically you want to try to minimize, so it's kind of an optimization problem, you want to minimize the actual costs. And then the Q, instead of having it just being front or back, is sorted by whatever is um, the in increasing cost, and the increasing cost. So basically the, ch the one that has the, the least amount of cost goes in the front, the one that with the biggest cost goes in the back. And so each, in this case, each um, path has a cost. So you have, you have your initial state, S, and then you have a path of 1, a path of 15, a path of 5, and you want to get to this goal state. So your, your quickest path would be go to this way. This path would be less optimal. This path would be the worst case. Oops. Now you see here We have each cost one. So the first path we're going to go down is one, but then we see that the goal to this one's 11. Then we go to the next one, we see it's 10, and this last one is going to be 20. But notice how, since this cost, this one costs the least, this one's 15 is already going to be more than this one, so we're going to stop after we go through path B. And then another modified search algorithm. <coughs> is insert the initial node into the fringe and then keep on going. And so this is the basic search algorithm. We're just kind of calculating the different states than I stated above. So we have the initial state, the fringe, and then so if we have a goal, we turn the path of the goal and then we actually check the values. So for now we're moving to kind of a heuristic model as far as calculating the, the goes. So in review, remember that a search tree is not the same as a state space. A search tree contains nodes. And then we have basically four different, um, or basically two different search strategies, a breadth first, a depth first. And then we went over the completeness of the different strategies. So breadth first is complete. Um, and it finds the optimal path. However, it's, it's time and space complexity, or it's time and space complexity are fairly high. The depth first, is incomplete and the suboptimal, but the time and the time is about the same as the breadth first strategy, but has a lot less space complexity. And then we want to avoid finding repeats, so you have to keep track of all the different states you visited. And then um, you can also make an optimal search with variable step costs, where these initial ones just have a step cost of one, where the cost um, uniform cost ones have a variable step cost, and you can maybe find a better path using that. And so, kind of already went over the review. Um, make sure to understand what completeness means, optimality means, and then how you would calculate the time and space complexity using big O notation. And then I hope you enjoyed this class. These are the acknowledgments I have. And if you would like to get, kind of get updated as I do stuff throughout the semester, please subscribe to the on this um, channel and also um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day.